Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. Ina, like China, or I know if you speak Yoruba. Is it just me, or is makeup just like not that interesting right now in the middle of a Panasonic? Like, what is it? Is it just because we're not leaving the house? Has the beauty industry as we've always known and loved it fallen off? I don't know. Like, I wanna know what you guys' thoughts are on that. There's like five brands that I can think of that I'm just genuinely still invested in. I look forward to their new launches and I'm like still kind of excited about. And one of those brands, shockingly, is Huda Beauty. Like, wait, that's actually not shocking. That sounded so pessimistic. I feel like a lot of us have moved away from full coverage and looking unrecognizably beat at all hours of the day. Like, where are you going? Where are you going? It's 2 p.m. and ma'am, this is a Wendy's. Mm. I don't know what that meant. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> but I love that. <laughs> and I kind of feel like Huda Beauty as a brand has evolved in that way too. So they just recently launched their Full Filter Foundation. They reformulated it. And I thought this was actually gonna be a sister to the OG Full Filter, but it turns out like, no. I went to the Sephora website and the OG Full Filter was gone. Cease to exist. Damn, not the sirens coming out right when I said that. <laughs> All right, so Huda Beauty, four years ago now, launched Faux Filter Foundation. It was like super full coverage. It had hella fragrance. It was like spackle. And I did a review video on it. You should definitely check it out. It still lives and thrives here on my channel. And in that video, I was expressing like, eh, I thought it was a very all right foundation. I'm not even gonna lie. After I filmed that video, I just never went back to it because one, they sent me the wrong color. I made it work, but it just wasn't a color that I would use. And then two, the formula itself just didn't get me excited. It didn't wake me up at night. This, however, the new and improved formula of hashtag full filter is the luminous matte. It's the full coverage liquid foundation. I think the brand still likes full coverage things, but now we're getting a lot of brands that give my skin, but like still make it matte, my skin, but like still make it buildable. And I feel like this is what this is. So today I'm gonna be trying it out for the first time and also giving it a wear test. Without further ado, let's jump right in. My lips are very dry, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Hold on, hold on. I know y'all say I talk too much, but I try to give you thorough reviews. I honestly really don't know who else gives you tea, reaction, <laughs> demonstrations on products while you're applying them. So like when you come here, you come here for me, baby, and I'm gonna give you more than just throwing the product on. That's all I'm gonna say about that, okay? Thanks. To prep my skin, I'm going to use the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I always wear a primer with all foundations. And I would have used her mattifying one, but I don't have it. And I also could have used her dewy skin one that she just launched with the stick foundation. But I find that primer to be more like skincare. I do really like it, but I just didn't really feel like it would mesh well with this foundation. So I got sent three colors of the Huda Beauty Full Filter Luminous, Mat Luminous Matte Foundation. Hope Hopefully these are better matches than the original formula because if you remember that video, <laughs> the matches weren't terrible, but it was like, I mean, it could have taken an ounce more of research, babes. You really could have leaned into some of my other previous shade matches and did a better job. They did do that with the stick though. I will say they did a really phenomenal job at diversifying the shades and sending me the correct one. The first shade that I have is Peanut Butter Cup 455R, which is supposed to be deep tan skin with red undertones. This looks slightly more pink to me. Oh, wow, girl. Now see, Huda, what the hell are y'all doing at the lab, Huda? I need to talk, Huda, I need, Huda, I need to talk to you. Is it just the sheerness of the foundation? Cause I don't even see it anymore. What the heck? I'm so confused. I don't care what the hell the foundation is described as. A match is a match, okay, honey? And that looks really good. Let me like really pile on more just to make sure I'm not tripping. I don't see it. Wow, that's freaking weird. What the hell? Is it just that lumen? Okay, I've never had a product blend in like that. Even when a product is the lightest of coverage, like you'll still see it because it's makeup and like I know what my skin looks like, but I don't see makeup on me at all. And I added like three layers. That's freaking weird. All right, so that's peanut butter cup. I was not looking forward to like being a match for that one, but I kind of think I might be one. The next shade that I do have is Mocha 500G. And this is actually the one that I assumed that I was gonna be because it was 500G and I think I'm mocha in the stick. I don't remember. Which by the way, I've been using the stick a lot, y'all, because her complexion products, I'm t I don't know what the hell she be doing, but like her complexion products are good. Well, the ones that she is now. All right, so I'm wiping off the product from my brush and I'm gonna use the other side to swatch Mocha 500G, which on the website is described as warmer deep tan skin with golden undertones. So let's start off with a little bit. 
I actually do think that's a good match. This one, I can see, like you can see this one is slightly darker. I feel like I'd probably use mocha around the perimeter of my face and peanut butter cup in the middle. Last time I said that in my, my last video, that was confusing to some people, but most dark skinned women, and yes, dark is a spectrum, because for some reason people like to debate how dark I am, but it's like, I'm not, anyway, most dark, and or brown skin women are not all one color in your face. You're like darker around the perimeter, you may be darker around the mouth area, the jawline, and then in the center, you're usually the most uh, bright, I guess you can say. I, this, this, it's getting weird. Talk to me, I need to know what I'm experiencing right now because where the hell did the makeup go? Now I can't be the lighting. All right, I see it now. When I pull my mirror closer, it does actually look a little bit more pink and neutral, but I could still use that. I could definitely still use that. So the last color that I have is Chocolate Mousse 450G. And this one is described as deep tan skin for people with golden undertones. Ooh, that's a good color. And just to make sure I'm not tripping, this is my first time doing makeup tutorial style in this lighting setup. I can see a little bit more of the pink neutralness that is in this shade. If I had the two, wow. That's a really freaking good match. Wow. Huda baby, tell your product development person to call me because wow, like I could literally use all three of these colors. But for demonstrational purposes, I'm only gonna use Chocolate Mousse 450G. I feel like this one would be a hair too light for me. It matches my chest, but my chest and the center of my face are a match. So sometimes I find myself going down just a, a hair so that I don't get too much of a mismatch. Do y'all, are y'all tracking me? Now mind you, these are just me problems. These won't necessarily apply to all of you. I'm just noting why I'm choosing the shade that I'm choosing because that's what reviews are for. I'm giving you the logic, the breakdown, my thoughts, etc. So I'm gonna try to minimize this next part as much as possible. I know y'all want me to just shut up and do the review. Like a lot of y'all be really acting like I'm not allowed to talk. Be candid in my reviews. I'm gonna be powdering my skin. I like to do a light layer of translucent powder immediately right on top of my primer. It's great to help control oil. And like the way that I do reviews, for those of y'all that may be new, is that I do my makeup the same way I normally would. I don't change a single thing because why would I? Like I need to make sure this product is gonna stand the test of time, you know, on a good day. A light layer of powder it is. This foundation comes in 39 shades and some of the changes I didn't talk about earlier, but I'm gonna talk about them as I apply the product in just a second. So I have applied a concealer and a contour, both are medium full coverage, and I'm gonna jump right in with one pump. I always start with one pump. We don't need to get out of control. This is a new foundation and a new product. So let's just start with one pump. Chocolate Mousse 450G, that's G for Goldson. All right, y'all, here we go. I'm gonna start with like very little product. I don't see nothing yet. This formula is very odd. I don't see the product, it's crazy. Like in a good way, I think, cause it's blending right in. It is non-comedogenic. That is what makes it different from the original formula is that the original formula, I guess had like D5 in it and that clogs pores for some people and causes breakouts. So they basically wanted this foundation to be like the antithesis of what the original formula was. And that was like full coverage, full beat, full glam. This is, I think, Something you could probably still build up, it kind of looks like, without all of the, you know, wow. That looks really, really good. Now I'm starting to actually see the product. I see the product, I see the makeup. I didn't really need a whole lot to get this much coverage, which is really good. So according to the Sephora website, this says it is transfer proof, fade proof, waterproof, sweat and humidity proof, and offers up to 24 hours of wear. I see why, even though the age of I wanna see my skin, Huda still, creates products that are like basically long wearable if you really, these are all traits of a long wearable product. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that like Huda lives in Dubai and I'm assuming her core customer base probably looks for that type of makeup that's like for super hot weather, stuff that won't like melt off in hotter climates. If she's creating the product, it's gotta work for her and where she lives, like it has to make sense for her too. So I think it's great that although we're in the era of like, I wanna see my skin, da 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 like there's still brand owners that are still thoughtful of like, let's be logical, okay? But the girls still want glam. It may be a different kind of glam, but the girls still want glam. The coverage of this so far, I think looks really good. This is a formula that I'm much more comfortable with compared to the original formula of the faux filter. The faux filter, just one texture, the noticeable difference. This one is definitely more liquidy. I remember the original faux filter. Please take a shot every time I say original. <laughs> OG Faux Filter definitely had a thicker, more gel, moussier texture. This one is a little bit more liquid, sort of. 
All right, now that I have applied it, I'm kind of getting, like, I'm kind of getting sheer glow. I'm definitely kind of getting NARS sheer glow vibes from this. It's like not really the fullest coverage. It's definitely not the lightest coverage now that it's on my face. I see the product on my face. It's luminous, it's it's slightly glowy, but it's not movable. I think it's really, really pretty. And the way that I judge foundations, I think to myself, can this compete with what I already wear? Will this compare to what I already wear? So far, I kind of feel like this does, just off of first glance, just first initial reactions. Can we also just say, you know, every time I feature Huda's products on my channel, a lot of people are like, didn't you say you didn't like Huda? I never said that, first of all. But I always feel like it's important as a fellow brand owner to like comment on people's growth. I mean, I'm not gonna comment that on every video, but I really, really see a lot of changes in Huda's brand by far. Shout out to like the OG Huda fans. I've been following her for a minute, like all the way back to when I lived in Kuwait in 2011. You can definitely tell that Huda was very much somebody who was, as many of us as women of color, like a prisoner to European beauty standards. Like you can tell she gave into that. I admire that in this short span that Huda Beauty has existed, they're evolving and they're already like, okay, well the girls care about skincare now, so let's give them skincare. I saw something that she posted on Instagram just a couple days ago when she was talking, you know, about photo editing and how she like didn't feel comfortable editing out her body rolls anymore. And she talks about things like body positivity and just like self acceptance and how she always felt shunned even talking about things like sex. She's I guess like reclaiming her sexy side, that is reflected in the products. I just feel like that's so cool and well thought out in a, a day and age where people are literally sometimes just like launching stuff and throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks. Like I appreciate the fact that brands, not just hoodas, but like I appreciate when brands like put a lot of personality into what they launch and like the brand direction in general. Does that make sense? I like that. And I'm here for growth. Cause like I see the growth and it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool seeing her really like put herself out there in a way that some brand owners probably wouldn't. I said all of that to say that this foundation and the new characteristics being like lighter coverage, more buildable, more like skin-like, not as mattifying. I see that it makes sense that she would launch a product like this because just based on the stuff that she talks about in her socials, I now understand why the brand is going like in the direction that it is. Because there's so much makeup, we have so many brands at our fingertips that now we kind of want to know like when you're launching this, like why and what's the point and what am I going to gain from it, right? Especially because I'm spending my money. And I see that a lot of the why behind her products is like where she is in her life. That just resonated with me. I don't know if y'all have picked up on that, but I definitely have and it's very, very admirable. I just added the lightest layer of powder. Y'all gotta give me powder, come on. Y'all gotta give me powder. The days of people thinking I'm just gonna like put a foundation on my face and just review it based on that by itself, no other additions are done. That's never gonna happen. So like I said, I'm doing my face the way that I normally would. That includes a bronzer. I'm gonna use the Fenty. I'm using the Fenty Coconutty Bronzer. And then I'm gonna do a cute light beat wrap up my thoughts, which I've already kind of given y'all my thoughts and then do a check in as I normally do when I'm done. All right, y'all, I'm back. Wow. We as a society have progressed past the need for ashy and orange foundations because wow, it has to be the foundation because I remember the stick being this phenomenal. And now, okay, the hands, it's always the hands and the chest. The hands and the chest will tell y'all gonna match it. And I feel like every varying shade in my complexion complexion is represented on my face right now, right now. And that's not just because of the foundation, it's also the bronzer. I also did some highlighting. There was some, you know, inter-community work here. All right, but damn, this looks so bomb. <laughs> like, let's talk though, like let's talk. I really wanna talk to you. <laughs> it looks so good. I'm really glad she reformulated this. Well, a part of me doesn't understand why she didn't just create like this as its own standalone product because I feel like there probably could have been room for both, or maybe there aren't, I don't know. You know, she's exclusive to Sephora, so sometimes Sephora, like it's like fighting for shelf space, so maybe she had to like pick one or the other. I'm glad this is where we are now as a society. So far, I actually do approve. Now, the mask proof, smudge proof claims, I need you to pull up because I need to know the truth on that, and I'll be doing my best to try to test that today. If not today, I'm gonna make it a point to test it this week because I was thinking about going to Target if I have the time today. So if I do go to Target, I'm gonna need to wear a mask, so I'm gonna figure that out today. But right now, it is just before five. But see, what had happened was, I had actually put this foundation on at around three. Cause like, it takes me a moment to like get in my vibe and my element with my videos, and I take my time, and sometimes I go back and watch the brand, you know, it takes a minute. So that means I gotta check back in at least by like 10 to give you like a seven, eight. You can always tell by like hour four to five what time it really is gonna be for your foundations. 
at least I do. Like my skin tells me like, okay, by hour five, you're not really gonna get much changes. So I'm gonna check back in a couple hours, but so far I am really, really liking not only the way this product looks, but the way that it matches me, the way that my complexion looks and feels. The blendability was really good. I mean, if the shades are anything like the few options that I had, it seems like there's gotta be, let me go back to the Sephora store because my shades, I feel like there was like 10 other shades past mine which is usually really good. Like that's why I look for in a brand at least. Yeah, so there's about nine other shades that go after 450. And I remember Huda mentioning something like she broke up the category slightly differently in this line. So whatever you wore previously from the OG faux filter foundation may be different in this line, just from what I remember her saying. But anyway, I'm really happy with the few color choices that I have. I definitely feel like I have somewhat of a summer, somewhat of a summer shade. I definitely have a good match now. I just think it looks really good. I wanted to pull back just a hair just so y'all see a wide shot of like how great this match looks. But yeah, I'm mm, up. I'm gonna have to start calling you Hadini. Cause girl, you doing something. Like this is, it takes a lot, I think, to get people excited about complexion products, let alone in the middle of a Panasonic, a Panorama. <laughs> like, ah. I like this foundation, I do. I'll see y'all in a couple hours. All right, y'all. Y'all got me going to Target in the rain now, Miss Girl. Y'all got me wearing a mask, girl. It's almost 10 o'clock. This Target is about to close. Yeah, I just really wanted to get the tea on how this product would actually hold up on its mask proof plate. So not only is it like cold and masky, but it's also raining. So I guess we are gonna test them waterproof claims too. And I decided not to go to Target because you know what? All the stuff I needed at Target, I can get at the grocery store anyway. I like this stuff. They don't be selling the simple micellar water anymore. So I'm gonna just grab this, but I do like this water. Guys, I'm back. We did it, y'all. I managed to wear this for a full day. I really didn't think I would make it this late. I actually was quite tired when I first started filming this video, but I made it to a full day. It's now officially 11 o'clock, damn near midnight. You saw the clips of me at the grocery store earlier, but what you don't know is that I haven't removed this mask since I got home from the store. I haven't taken it off at all because I kind of wanted to do the big reveal on camera. <sighs> so I don't think that's bad at all. So is it mask proof? I think we need to talk about what mask proof really means. And this is actually something that I learned when NARS launched her new foundation. When brands market something as mask and smudge proof, it doesn't necessarily mean like it won't do this at all. It just means you can wear a mask on your face and the makeup will still be intact, which there's a little bit of separation. I do still feel like I look camera ready, but does my makeup look slightly different now to the way that it did early when I put it on? Of course it does. This is a full day wear, but you know what? I'm gonna say that this foundation and this formula is long wearable. I am going to say it's not necessarily transfer proof. Is it smudge proof? Yes, I think it's more smudge proof than anything. So this is me close up and I haven't blotted at all. I haven't touched up this makeup at all. I could use a quick refresher, but once I do blot, like here, I'll even just use this mask. I still feel like my face overall is refreshed. It's still intact. And like I said, I still feel and look camera ready. I think this finish and this foundation is still really pretty. I think I kind of was more wowed by the stick though. There's just something about the stick, but you know what? I'm just gonna give Huda Beauty props on making complexion products, arguably one of their most exciting things in a time where like no one cares about complexion. I still care about complexion when it's NARS, when it's Fenty, when it's Huda, and when it's Pat McGrath. So it's really legacy status for me at this point. I'm not gonna lie, I am standing. I do really like this product and I would recommend this product. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and hanging out with me. I kind of feel like y'all are still here for my reviews. So I'm just gonna continue doing them if that's all right with y'all. And let's be real, if you enjoyed this video, you're gonna enjoy another one. In fact, you've already added the next video to the queue. If you haven't yet, here's one right now. Thank you for watching everything, that's cute. That's cute, but let's be real. We need to keep you flowing because your girl is fighting with an algorithm, you know, a computer, all right? So keep supporting your girl, like this video, and then watch another one when you're done. Thank you. Cheers.